Okay, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, I'm testing out these kind of interesting headers. We got a request to have solderless headers uh, in the store. And so if you look, these look just like pin headers, but you see there's like this little like notch hole in the uh, shorter pin. This, the way this is designed is that you could kind of like shove it into some uh, holes in a breakout board and they would make contact using like a cold contact, not a hot solder contact. So you could do some quick prototyping and then you could remove them if you wanted to, but maybe, you know, for uh, times when you don't want to solder headers in. So the only thing I noticed is that you need to, you know, kind of, it's a little bit tricky. You definitely want to have, um, you know, the headers the right length. So let's break off piece and see if I can do this live demo. Okay. And then you want to get like a good grip on the header. So I'm using like these pliers. And then like so using the pliers to press down flat and uh there you go we did it and then i actually checked this is like you know it's pretty solid and it's got continuity so the only trick is like you really need to use pliers or a vice to really get good um leverage because you have to push them in but it's okay that this one is like not fully pushed in you can like give it a little bit more of a yank if you want there you go. yeah and then you just adjust it so you know it's not easier than soldering but you don't need a soldering iron anyways uh these look good so i'll put them in the shop all right lady what's this okay i'm doing bring up on a new feather as you can see it's the esp32 c6 this is a new uh chip in the family for espressif it's a tensilica processor Sorry, it's a Risk Five, not a Tensilica processor, and it has Matter Zigbee support. Um, so I think it has Wi-Fi, and I don't think it has BLE, but it has Zigbee instead. So I made a feather for this module. It doesn't have a ton of pins, so like one or two of these pins are shared. But I did have a second LDO for low power on the Stemma QT port, battery monitoring, battery and recharging, uh, boot and reset button, and you know plenty of analog pins, SPI, I squared C, UART and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna keep testing it, uh, but luckily, you know, because Espressif has like one board support package for all of their boards, um, you know, NeoPixel just worked out of the box. So I'm gonna test all the pins, all the peripherals, and then do some low power tests, and maybe we'll do another video. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, I'm testing out the new camera Pico Bell. This is a board that matches up with a Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W to give you access to a parallel camera and an SD card and an on-off, uh, sorry, a shutter switch and a stomach UT port. So this is how we used to wire up cameras for use with uh, Pico. So you can see on this like breadboard, I've wired up all like 12 or 13 pins. And then I've also wired up a um, 240 by 240 TFT. And it does work, but boy, it is kind of a uh, pain. And it's very messy and error prone. So now with um, the new Pico Bell, it's much more elegant here. I've, you know, it doesn't have a TFT, but I've wired up a TFT separately. Um, you just plug it in and it uses any of the cameras that have the DDP inf interface, which is like OV7670, 2640, 5640. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of things tested, including taking photos and sending to the SD card, and of course mirroring and also a webcam demo. So this is good to go. We're going to get this into the shop soon. And that is Tom's secret. Okay, let's do some questions. Yeah.